So we will start uh, with our panel. Our panel will be based on a few questions we uh, prepared before uh, before the panel. And that will be great. I can start to sing. And uh, so I will move uh, to the first uh, questions I want to raise to the. My first question was, is uh, what are the trends that will affect the future labor market? How will automate and AI influence the employment market? Uh, there is a chance that I sit there and then I will have to talk also. Okay. My, my first question was, what are the trends that will affect the future labor market and how will automations and AI, deep learning and so on, will influence the employment market? And if it's okay, I will start with the Amazon guy. Well, thank you all very much for, for having me here. And um, I, I was also enthused by Professor uh, Trachtenberg's comments at the, at the start and very much aligned with them. I think that there is a, a giant importance on a revolution in education right now. Um, I always go back to a quote from Bill Gates and from Amazon that may be unique to hear a comment from Microsoft's leader, but uh, he said, we always underestimate the change that will occur in, the, in two years and underestimate the change that will occur in the next 10. Uh, don't lull yourself, um, don't let yourself be lulled into inaction. Uh, right now, education, or the industry, is entering the golden age of AI. We are starting to democratize machine learning. Um, one way that that's happening in Amazon is we're moving up the stack. It used to be about needing a PhD to do machine learning, um, developing the models, coalescing the models, creating predictive um, attributes on top of it. And now we're moving into advanced services that start to do that modeling for you. Um, we are moving up to API services that enable um, practitioners to get into it very quickly. Um, that, that notion of the democratization of, of machine learning means that we need to rethink math for students. In the K-12 era, students need to be aligned to be um, data scientists. It may be and I absolutely concur with Professor Trachtenberg about bringing, inverting that pyramid and getting younger. And so it means a scaffolding of knowledge, but no longer a relational databases in SQL, the only thing that people need to understand. Non-relational databases, um, the streaming of data is so very, very vital. Um, Along this path, I also um, echo that notion of how important youth, youth unemployment plays into this. We are creating you know, unrest if we aren't pushing all of this learning um, externally. Now, tied to that, I do have a, I do believe that governments can play a role. I think that this exists in, in my travels across the world. I run a, a global case, uh, program around teaching and learning um, in the cloud. Means that when there is a centralized ministry, there's a lot that can be done. There's a lot of top-down um, emphasis that can be done along with that bottom-up notion. One of the things that needs to be done from a top-down uh, level is we need to realize that education is actually in crisis mode. Um, the unbundling of education is happening because educational institutions are actually not doing their job. They are not innovating at a quick enough pace. The whole workforce is moving at rapid pace. It's changing at such incredible and non-before seen pace that if education and the, the knowledge that we give to students, the practical hands-on experience and the move away from pure theory um, doesn't happen. If we do not open up 
students to many, uh, many opportunities and lifelong learners, not just from your four-year and your K-12 institution, but into an always-on, on-the-go, personalized scheme, um, we're not going to be we're not going to be able to give access and to diversify that workforce. Ronnie, uh, if you can refer, and I apologize, but I didn't make the introduction for each of you, so you will make the self-introduction and then answer this question, and then we'll do it all over. So, Ronnie. Sure. So. I'll it's working. Working. I'll start with the introduction. If um, I'm Roni Schnitzer, I uh, head the policy planning and strategy uh, unit for the Ministry of Labor and Social Affairs at the Labor Branch. So you and you represent here the, the ministry, one of one of the one of, one of the relevant the civils, uh, yes. right. Um, what we do or or our job is to. Um, try to see how we can help individuals and the labor market once um, they finish their education system and see what, how do we facilitate with lifelong learning and how do training that we give is um, able to become relevant. And then that means for us that we need to start thinking more and more in terms of skills and less and less in terms of occupations and professions because we know those are changing and changing fast. Um, but skills either very basic generic skills like quantitative abilities and the um, working in a technological uh, area and, and English is something that is needed more and more in the labor force. Uh, occupations, we talk all the time about op occupations that are shrinking or disappearing or going away, but we have a lot of occupations that are just changing. Um, their mechanic 15 years ago did not need to know English to do their job, but today he needs to um, work with the computer to see what's wrong with the car, and they need to, and it has to have basic English. So we're working on those generic uh, skills and seeing how we can, uh, or what ways we have to uh, uh, help people get those skills all through their their life um, life course, we also know that we need to work on what is called soft skills, and soft skills I think is kind of um, uh, a term that doesn't do justice to to what what it is, because if you cannot market yourself today and market your value, like Nirit said, and market your career, then then you may not have a career at all, even if you have value. So that is another thing that we are working on to see how we can do this in training. How do we get to individuals to convince them that this is something we all need to put our time in? I'm working today, I'm fine, I'm doing great. Everything is great. But if I do not take care of those soft skills that maybe I have and maybe I don't, I'm going to be in a problem. And it's something that, it's not about, you know, um, financing, and it's not about, it's, it's something about a mindset that needs to change. And that's so, so you say that some of the skills are changing, and you say that some of the jobs are disappearing, but most of them are changing. And uh, third, marketing is very important also in the employment uh, Market. Yes, but marketing as an example. I mean, it's not you know the one thing. It's a, as an example to say why we think soft skills. And again, I don't like the name because I think it doesn't do justice. Why we think there are some essential skills that we self self branding is a, is a well known term and sure. it's okay. Um, um. It is is something that is a must, and and we need to see how we can help people. Uh, okay. Get them. Shyly. Again. Hi, good morning. Uh, I'm Shari Spiegelman. I'm the CEO of Digital Israel uh, under the Ministry of Social Equality. Digital Israel was established about three, maybe almost four years ago with the notion that we want to make Israel more digital. So not the startup nation, which is already very advanced, but more of the public sphere in general, the government and the public sphere. How do we push? How do we do the digital transformation into the public sphere? We're working with all different ministries, including the Ministry of uh, uh, Labor, uh, Social and Labor, to see how we can help them do the digital transformation. Um, I would like to say maybe, after this very short intro, maybe three or four thoughts, very quick thoughts on the question. Uh, 
First, I agree with uh, Professor Trachtenberg and, and, and the Amazon guy, as they say, Ken, right? <laughs> that we need to start very early. Um, very, very early. We need to start at preschool, maybe in kindergarten. And today, we are not there yet. Maybe in the hospital. Maybe, yeah, while pregnancy, you to give plug, some... Plug, yeah. Plug, yeah. So sleep, uh, sleep, sleep, uh, sleep. Yeah, a bot pregnancy. But um, we really should start very early and give these skills. Today, people, uh, kids are born, they're native with, the native with digital skills. We are not. We are immigrants, as you know. And we should introduce the new skills and capability as soon as possible and integrate that into their learning, day-to-day -day learning. So this is one thought. My second thought is we should not leave anyone behind. I don't know if you know, and this is part of our work, in Israel, 20% of the people are not online at all today. So talking about AI and bots and very, very important. But as soon as, as more as we progress, the more we leave people behind and we're not narrowing the gaps, we're just widening the gaps. And it's very important not to leave everyone behind. And this new era gives a lot of a really big opportunity for this, this advantage populations. I want to give just a quick, quick example. We visited in the last week or two weeks ago in the ultra-Orthodox women's seminar. For the Israelis around, this is a very conservative organization. And the rabbi said, I can definitely see some of my students becoming um, a bus driver. Now, he said he, she will not ride the bus. She will be uh, behind the screens in an in a AI Probably. bus, in an automated bus, exactly in the future, when the buses will drive themselves, but the ultra orthodox woman can actually drive the bus in the command uh, and control area. And this oh. give, a, and, and I, we were uh, shocked with this example because this opens a new m world for underprivileged communities, for people who today cannot join the work. So it's not only closing jobs, it's also opening jobs. But we, we should be very, very smart in how we're handling it and make sure that we don't leave anyone behind and take to this crazy ride everyone with us and take good look and educate the, ultra, the minorities, our minorities, ultra orthodox Senior citizens, people are today not online at all, not advanced online, just not online. So this is really important to take into consideration. Mano, thank you very much. Mano, could you add? If you can specify, talk about, again, we talk about, you know, AI, deep learning, machine learning. You know, in a few years, we will not sit here, a machine will sit here, a bot will answer. They will also not be here because the audience will be also bot and bot talk with bot. And we can look at Netflix, you know, in, in home. So, uh, by the way, the, the microphone is really, there is a echo, no? I mean, it's a, can you hear well or is it okay? It's okay. Okay. Um, so, um, you know, when I listen to, to, to you and, and the problem with this panel is that we agree too much. You know, a panel to be interesting has to be disagreement. So, you know, the, uh, that's you a know, big difference with the Knesset. The Knesset, <laughs> even if there is agreement, you fight with each other. But here it doesn't happen. You think we can change them with a bot? I mean, <laughs> 120 bots talking with each other. And right, exactly. It will be so anyway, so let me, let me say uh, uh, the following. When we think about the course of technology and how it's going to impact employment and so forth, we tend to think of it as something deterministic, something that happens outside the realm of the ability of humans to influence it. But it's not so. I mean, to a large extent, it is, because, you know, scientific advances and so forth, uh, they, they have a life of their own, but not completely. We can influence the course of technology, and in particular, I want to introduce the notion of human enhancing innovations as opposed to human replacing innovations. Human enhancing innovations are those that empower more us, the professionals and so forth. So if a doctor, a physician, uh, has at his or her disposal a machine learning system that allows him or her to make a better diagnosis and you know things like that are being developed or in radiology for example how to interpret a CT scan that makes for a better doctor it doesn't replace the doctor but there are many other innovations that are purely 
replacement. And what I want to claim is that we need to pay attention to the way technology goes and we can influence it in order to uh, do more of the first type, the human enhancing innovations and not human replacing innovations. This is something that we have to become aware of that possibility in order to try to channel in that direction. And then the impact on employment and so forth can be very, very different. So that's one point. The second point is that we, we talk about skills and what we need to convey and so forth and so on. One of the sort of the most common errors about talking about that is that people think that, okay, you need to, te to teach interpersonal skills, you need to teach communication, you need to teach uh, social skills, etc., soft skills, which, is, which, which are not soft. You don't teach a course on interpersonal skills. That's, excuse me, stupid. And what you have to do is to embed those skills into a course in mathematics, into economics, into psychology, into everything. Whatever you teach, whatever you learn, it has to be packaged, it has to be, it has to be enriched with the development in a seamless way, without calling it that way, without making an issue out of it. That's what we need to do. That's where innovation is required big time, because right now, we don't know how to do it. By the way, in Mind UK, well, we, you know, with that uh, Yuval mentioned before, for example, they have developed these escape rooms, okay, for studying chemistry, chemistry, okay? But, you know, in the course of doing that in an escape room, you have to develop, for example, collaboration skills with the other three or four guys that are with you, teamwork, and so forth, okay? How to communicate with each other in an environment which is of high stress. So this is you know, part of the big challenges that we need to address. And one more point, you, know, you mentioned governments and you say that there is a role for governments and we have representatives of governments here. For sure. Uh, the thing is that as long as I'm not a minister, I'm allowed to talk about the bottom up. <laughs> Okay, uh, uh, my, my next question, you answer it already, but I want uh, a quick answer from each of you. Which professional you will recommend to your children to go to uh, learn and which is not? For example, I don't think that uh, my daughter should be a lawyer or uh, even not a programmer, if I might say all those I'm a programmer. And I uh, recommend her to do that, data scientist, but she will go in to be a doctor, so it's ne never important what I will say. So Manu, we'll start with you. What you recommended to your uh, children <laughs> and what not? Anything I would recommend, they wouldn't do it. So, so let me tell you actually, if you ask, I will tell you what's actually happening with my three daughters because it's interesting. My older one, she's uh, 30, 30 or 31, I don't remember. Don't, don't tell her that I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> one moment, I will WhatsApp her and yeah. tell her that you she, don't know exactly the... She is uh, doing, uh, finishing up a PhD in physics here at Tel Aviv University uh, in optics lasers leading to quantum computing, okay? So that's a, you know, that's a classic case uh, that you know, she was very good in math and so forth and went that way. The second one, she's currently doing an MA in a, a social psychology, but, but she wants to switch now to medicine, okay? And I will elaborate on what that it means. And the third one, she spent five years in the intelligence in the army, came out being an expert in computer communications, blah, blah, blah. She's now working in the high-tech sector, and studying at the Open University computer sciences, but you know, not really in a very systematic way. This is what's happening. So you have a distribution. Some of them are going the straight way, you know, in the, in the more traditional fields, but with the wink towards the frontier, which is quantum computing. Some of them don't see the career path as a straight line, okay? From psychology, social psychology, medicine. And it's very interesting why he wants to study medicine, not because of the traditional motives, but because <laughs> this is amazing. 
I mean, she, she, she's a mother already, and she has a child that had to be hospitalized, and she went through the emergency room. She was incredibly excited about the emergency room. She wants to direct an emergency room, okay? Because she's an entrepreneur, entrepreneurial type, and you know, she likes all sorts of uh, how to manage these complex situations. That's what motivates her. This is the 21st century. And the, fourth, the third one, you know, again, is what I, the fluidity of work, study, self-work, and so forth. So what I will tell my, my, if I had more children, <laughs> or my grandchildren, what I will tell them is, be, don't be dogmatic, don't look back, don't look at your parents, don't look at the former professions. You know, the way the world is an amazing opportunity set that you have to kind of navigate in it and remember, and this is important, their life expectancy is over 90. Their life expectancy is yeah. over 90. Take your time, you know, you need to, to, you don't need to finish the BA, MA, PhD, blah, 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 the age of X, because, you know, all the, there are only so many years left. Only short, if I may ask, okay. Sure. Um, my oldest child is three and a half, so I know enough not to <laughs> guess the profession in 30 okay. and 40 and 50 and 60 years from But now. what you will suggest her, what you will recommend But her? I think one of the... Uh, I see the interest in even small children and I'm now trying to teach and, and looking for things to talk in English to a three and a half year old because I think it's important and they know and see uh, the amount that I work on the computer and then try to play with that and that is something I need I think all young children should be we should all be very aware with uh, these very basic generic skills that we're going to need and they're not going anywhere no matter what we do so okay Ken um, what professional beside you recommend of course to work in Amazon oh well, absolutely um, entrepreneurs uh, so it, the notion of just that the entrepreneurial mindset, um, I think is going to permeate. Um, and I think that's one of the, the biggest problems that education has. Yes, I believe that they need computational thinking. I need, think that they need data sciences knowledge. But uh, we, we teach ambiguity very poorly in education. Everything heads towards terminal degrees and terminal tests and so on. We're not teaching people to be innovative. We need, within Amazon, everything is about thinking big and iterative mindsets and so on. We need people who can come in and be um, entrepreneurs at every level. And I think that that permeates diversity too. Well, I have four kids. But they're all very small. Four. four. Okay. But they're all very small, so I If you have five, you can make get a, a, basketball a basketball team, team. but not yet. Uh, um, so they're young, I have no idea what I'm going to tell. You're not Def finish. I mean, four, it's, it's a start. It's yes, a good start. Yes, I'm young. Um, I want to say, as a mom, that they can do whatever they dream to do. But uh, more practical for this panel, I would say that it doesn't matter what they learn, because in the next era, they, the interdisciplinarity will be a key focus. They will do a lot of things. It doesn't matter what they study in university when they're 20, because by the 30, everything will change upside down. So they need to be adapt for online learning, for small courses, for small nano training, go as they learn, sweet jobs. Uh, the, I agree with Professor Tachtelbeck, the linear, our way of doing and what we, my mom was dreaming for me to become a lawyer, that is, he, that, that is history. That's yeah. not going to repeat. And no LA lawyer anymore. What? No LA lawyer. Yes, anymore. I am a lawyer, but it's, you know, because that's what my mom thought I should be, but it doesn't matter. I think the kids will do a lot of things. They will have a very long career from 20 to, I don't know, 80 or 90. They will, they inter, what we're looking today in the market, what people will be looking is interdisciplinarity. It's not enough to have science or data or computer science. You wouldn't be a person who is a round person have done a lot because dealing with the future challenges, you need a lot of different skills. Okay, and the last questions. Uh, what are the trends uh, resulting from those changes we talk about? to uh, the education and training sector, and I will give first uh, trend, or first uh, new issue, 
Uh, there is a new term now in the, in the learning market talking about to teach people what we call it unlearning, which means to teach people to forget, to teach people to forget what they learn. Because if you change jobs or if your role is changing, the real issue, the real program, and I'm talking from my experience from the software engineering, that if you are learning to develop a structure programmer and then they come the object oriented, it's very difficult if you are not forget the past to learn the future. So one of the skills we didn't talk about that we need to teach, and it's quite a new one, is to teach people to forget and to come with a blank uh, paper uh, so they can start to teach from beginning without uh, taking the past and the old tradition uh, wrong way to the future to uh, against the possibility to learn the new uh, trend. So I would like to hear also other trends that you think will infect uh, the training, and that will be the last questions. So if you want to say anything else on the, this issue, you can edit. So we will start with Ken. Sure. Manu, we will, we will finish with you. So you will do the finale. <laughs> yes. Ready for the flourish. Um, uh, so, with the, the unlearning uh, piece, we, without a doubt, one of the, the biggest challenges I have when people come into Amazon is the notion of, yeah, again, being able to deal with what they don't know and also um, ambiguity. And so they get quickly trained and untrained of, and they bring it from other companies, um, and they bring it from school, this notion of, well, when people come to me and they ask during an interview, what is your average day? There, there absolutely is no average day. So we need people who can think on their feet. I, I think credentialing and micro-credentialing are going to continue to grow as we start to um, unbundle more of higher education. I think the career pathways between um, K-12 or you know, primary and secondary schools and higher ed is going to continue. I think the notion of anytime, anywhere learning and not stopping with your education is going to grow. People are going to need to be constant learners. MOOCs and coding camps. I had a pleasure of meeting with people from Elevation Academy um, yesterday. That will continue uh, to grow. And I see this great role we're working very heavily with community colleges in the United States and then trade schools and vocational schools globally on being a disruptive agent because they hit communities of diversity. Amazon recruits from uh, the same places usually as a Google and a Facebook and an Apple, and that's just not going to work. You know, we have major skills gaps, so we need to go after new populations. They move quicker. They realize that they need to prepare people for careers. They'll partner with private, you know, private companies like Amazon. I think that that is also vital because curriculum needs to, be, needs to move at a much faster pace. Um, but I think they act as great disruptive agents. And they're also reaching down into K-12 as they reach upwards into you know, four-year and the like. Shyly, and I will let you to go after you answer if you need to go, okay? But yeah, I, I'm sorry, I have a meeting in Jerusalem, but I can wait 10 more minutes. Um, well, I, I, I don't want to talk about the future trends. Um, they're a bigger expert than me. Um, my challenge on my day-to-day -day job is how to streamline already, tre already existing trends in